Good morning, everybody. This week we're gonna do a week vlog. My hope is to be outlining this week. My stretch goal is to outline this whole book, which if you're new here, I have a book in revision that just got a bunch of feedback returned to me and I am not ready to face that yet. So I'm first gonna outline my book for NaNoWriMo, which I know is a little early, but you know, you can never be too early when it comes to NaNoWriMo. But right now it's Monday morning. I have to leave for work in like literally 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna take these 20 minutes to look at my schedule and kind of time block it out and see how many different sessions of time do I have, just to see if I can realistically even make a goal of, outlining, of finishing the outline this week. Let's just dive right in and plan the week. Okay, I've really lost all sense of how time works. Do you think, do you think like three hours per act is enough time to do like a real outline of a book? I feel like the answer is no. Like, is that crazy bananas fruit salad behavior? I will need to figure out like characters though. I keep forgetting about that. I had this comment from one of my readers and at first I was like, how dare you? And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't really give my characters very much personality in the first draft. Like I really don't. Let me know if you do this as well because I feel like in the first draft, I'm trying to figure out what's happening. Oftentimes all I'll go into a first draft with is the main character, like what their job is, what they want, and then how like, and how that impacts the story. Like I only think of the character's personality in relation to the story and how they would react to that. And I had a reader, she was like, I feel like she just has no personality. She has no friends. She has, no at first I was like, well, some people just don't have very many friends. My book that I'm querying right now didn't have like female friends. She didn't really have an interest except for like what she was studying in school. And she only was like talking to these two men. I was like, what are we doing? So then I added in like a math club and like all these other friends that she can have. And it made the story so much stronger too because then I could incorporate. And so I feel like that's often something for me that comes in a second draft, but I don't know if that's okay. But you know what? Everybody writes differently, so it is okay. And I don't really want to hear anything about it. in so long now you guys <sighs> the whole writing thing i forgot how to make characters i think every time i write a book how do you make a character i know i just need to like remember you know i have one character this is why i stray away from doing the characterization before because i just go too hard on the character backstories and they all end up being like why did this person want to become a dentist, let's say. It's not a dentist, but let's say that's the question. Like, what was their childhood like? And then I'll go, well, what if when they were young, their mother died of a tooth infection and the father like kept all the teeth in a jar in the basement. And so she just like constantly looked at the teeth and then she like became obsessed with teeth and then became like, that's where instead of just being like, she had a good experience at the dentist or like she was good at math. Like, I don't know why I just give my characters so much pain, but like it kind of pulled the story together, honestly.
Okay, so this book is getting good. Do you guys like my lamp? I think it adds kind of a, like a little, little backlight, film, videography. She's a videographer. She actually is. Fine, I'll go back to it, okay? Is that what you wanted? It's fun, you guys. Writing is fun. <laughs> I think this is my, ooh, ooh, ooh. I think this is my favorite, or one of my favorite stages is when there's like, everything's a possibility, you know? Why does he need the money? Why does he need the money? His name is Clyde. Oh. No, that starts with C, damn it. Hi. It's currently like 7.35. Really, like, do not want to write. I really don't. I could not, I could not. But the problem is that I actually do. Okay, I know. <laughs> I showered to like try to see if I could get more energy. Didn't really work. Now I just feel like I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> but it is 7.40. I can't go to bed at 7.40. But I think I'm, maybe I'm just tired. I don't know. I am now this week is the first week I've actually been consistent at getting up at like five. So maybe that's it. But I like you guys for like six, no, it was like nine months last year got up at 5 a.m. every day and like went to the gym. Like, I just feel like I have no willpower and talking to you is just an excuse for me to not write. But it's only 7.40, I have to write. But I just wanna start building up my writing muscle so that I'm prepared for nano, so I can just like, so that it's not hard, so I'm not going from not writing at all to writing like two to three sessions a day. Like I just wanna be building that up. You know, you know, you know. This morning worked on my male main character. I started working on the backstory and I started working on just like filling out. Like I just have like a list of like, what's their family? What's their hobbies? What are their TV tastes? What was their childhood like? Who are the three most important people in their life? Like those kind of things. And they often like lead to like, ooh, that could be a subplot. I'm excited about the story. I just want to have the energy to do it well. And the thing that I have to figure out is very thinky. Like I have to really think. I'm really complaining a lot. <laughs> Did you know that writing is hard sometimes? Are we shocked? <laughs> I know, I haven't started yet. You know what I'm gonna do? Anything but write really at this point. Um, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna set an intention. Who is she? I'm gonna play a 10 minute game of chess. I'm gonna tell my mind to figure out what kind of crime this is. That's what I need to figure out. And you can watch me play chess now. Do you like the chess montages? I think it's kind of fun. But I speed it up. The way, the way he is begging for mercy. And then he loses the rook. And another one. So never let me do that again. That was a horrible decision. I just played chess for an hour. I think I could have and it would have been great and I would have been really successful and probably gotten a book deal and all the good things would have come. But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta play chess. I lost so brutally in my last round. It was brutal. It was brutal. I was winning. I was at Baruch. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. The variety. The variety? What? And the top one is what I was going to ask, but like, how did you know that? I didn't even say it out loud. Okay, FBI agent watching me. I'm writing a book. Okay, did you know that you're more likely to get away with murder than bank robbery? Crazy, what? Like they're, what? <laughs> discouraged, color me discouraged. What are the most common locations of a robbery? A highway, really? Ooh, ooh, okay, okay, wait a minute. I don't know if I wanna put that in, I'm too afraid. There's so much, there's so, this is such a rabbit hole. Oh, 
Oh my gosh, there's so many types of money laundering. There's one section where I'm like, okay, I want this to happen and this to happen and this to happen and it all will happen kind of at the same time or near each other. But I don't know if I want that to happen like right away in act two, if that is like the bulk of act two or if that's more of like act two part two, you know? But then I don't know what the midpoint would be because the midpoint that I have in mind would have to happen like before that. So it's just a lot of staring and trying to figure out and just trying to think and I haven't thought in a while. It's like, I love to think, like do those, solve those kinds of puzzles, but I just feel like my brain is too busy. Like there's just too much going on. And yet nothing going on at the same time somehow. Like I literally feel like I do nothing and yet my brain still feels too busy. I don't know. I don't know. It happens. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm just coming to this life. We're gonna do life moment. Like wanting to be able to just use all my creative energy to do this, you know, and to just like really give it the space that it needs. If I just had an uninterrupted week, I could figure it out. But it's like, I need to dismiss that because I've written three full books while being busy and while being in school and while working full time. Like I've I've done that so I know that I can do it and so I, I know that I need to just like shut down these excuses because I think with querying and with um, just like being on the internet and seeing people get book deals and like living their <laughs> living their life that imposter syndrome that comparison which we all she's our best friend she really is like I'm like they just get to think about their story all the time and I know that I'm only seeing a peak of this person's life like you're only seeing the writing part of my life so like I might be giving that impression too, that this is all I do, I just think about this. But truly, I just keep thinking about that and about how I really want that creative freedom to just like, just do this all day and like really give it the time. I know this about myself and I did this focus video a while back where like once I get 25 minutes into a task and I can get into flow and like that's the part that I love. Feeling like that's the only thing, you know? And I'm just not at a point right now where I have the energy to do that. And maybe I do and I just need to like suck it up and do it, you know? Like it takes work for me to be able to get into this focus flow. Like it doesn't happen every time. And I still enjoy it when it's not that, but like those are the moments that keep me going that like, like give me that spark. I don't know. Does any of that make sense? Probably not. Say ya uh, tomorrow. the vlog because I finished the outline. Did I tell you that? Did I tell you I finished the outline? Which is like the whole major point of this video. <laughs> I am experimenting with new setups. That is a basket. It's an Easter basket in the corner. Were you wondering? Yeah, it's like Saturday after middle noon. That's not a time, but I think we all know what I'm saying, right? I had initially wanted to go into NaNoWriMo with like a really, really solid, really thorough outline that maybe had some scenes written out. 
And so I think I'll still do Preptober and just like expand on the outline because the outline that I have is very like each Save the Cat plot beat, you know, has like two or three sentences in it. Like most of the characters don't have names. Most of the, like the settings aren't clear. The scenes themselves aren't clear, but like what happens in the book is clear. Where they go, where they end up, what that midpoint is, I have an outline. I think in some books that's been all I've had before going into a first draft. In terms of the outline, we did succeed. It always feels like kind of a fake success when it's such like a limited outline, but when I think about where I was at the beginning of the week and like what I started with and what we have now, there was a lot of progress made, but it mostly just looked like me staring out a window. Like I think those people at that coffee shop think I'm insane because I literally just like sat there and stared out and then like after 10 minutes I was like, oh. I wrote some, like there are some scenes that I'm so excited to write already. And so thank you for coming along this week with me. Let me know what your outline process looks like. My last video, there was some good advice in those comments. So drop all the advice for outlining. How thorough do you usually go? Have you started planning for November? It's only a couple of months away, not to stress you out. 